Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Fairfield lacrosse player Danny Santora. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Danny, and how's everything going? Everything's good. Everything's good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited to have you on as well. And obviously, uh, you just graduated college. So what have you been up to since graduating and how has your summer been? My summer's been great. I mean, this we I'm living down the shore in Jersey and working as like a server and hostess, which is pretty easy money, which is good. And it's just great, like being on the beach all the time. But this week, the weather's been so bad. So I'm hoping it's <laughs> sunny again. <laughs> Yeah, the summer weather has been sort of iffy this year, so hopefully it can improve a little bit um, after the 4th of July. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. How's your summer? It's been very good. Obviously, I've been working an internship right now and starting up this podcast. So uh, so far, I've been fu- very busy, but very fun. And I'm hoping to uh, just go to uh, some Red Sox games with some of my friends and sort of just uh, enjoy the time off. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Well, obviously, uh, do you still plan to do lacrosse uh, for next year? And if so, where will that be? Yeah, so I actually decided that I won't be taking my fifth year. So nowhere else to go. But um, yeah, so I'm hanging up the cleats officially. Oh, nice. How weird is it to be officially retired? It's weird. It definitely is. I'm definitely taking the not training part. I think I'm liking that a little too much. (laughs) (laughs) I got to get back into a routine, but I definitely took the time off and enjoyed it. But yeah, it's definitely going to be weird. It's going to be hard because my whole life I've been like working out, but it's been for something rather than Mm -hmm. myself. And I don't love working out. (laughs) I only do it for lacrosse. So it'll definitely be like a lot of discipline. It'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) Yeah, I think once you get to sort of a routine, it sort of works itself out and you start to enjoy it. Like I like going on walks. That's a good workout for me and it clears my mind. So you find certain little things like that that I think help your body and mind out a lot. Yeah, definitely. I've learned like I actually enjoy going on runs. Like I've never enjoyed going on runs my whole life until the season ended. I was like, wait, this is actually nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. (laughs) So it's interesting. Well, I sort of want to transition and talk about the beginning of uh, your lacrosse career and sort of work all the way up to where you are today. So uh, from the research I did on yourself, it says you're from Pennsylvania. So talk about growing up there and how did you start playing lacrosse? Yeah, so I grew up in like a small town right outside Philly. And I was, my dad was played lacrosse, my brother played lacrosse, my dad coached it. So I was around lacrosse and I'm the youngest. So I was around it just growing up. Like, I don't remember picking up my first lacrosse stick. There's photos of me playing with the boys stick with my brother's stick stuff like that so I've always been like playing lacrosse and I always knew I was going to like sort of because I played so many sports that, like I didn't know which one I wanted to pick but lacrosse was always like an option for me so I started from a young age which is really important and then because it's just such like a hard sport to get into it's very frustrating in the beginning but yeah and like everyone around me plays it it's such an east coast sport So it was just very natural. Everyone clicked immediately. Playing club was easy because all my friends, high school, everyone wanted to play. So it was like pretty perfect. Just ran with it. (laughs) And obviously you're from a lacrosse family. So did you watch any lacrosse growing up? Who was like sort of your favorite player you like to, um, I guess, model your game after? Yeah. So I was obsessed with like, like every little girl, UNC, Tar Heels, like, obsessed I was like that's the school I'm gonna go to like no but um so I was obsessed with just watching them I didn't really when I was like that age I didn't really know I didn't like obsess over any specific player but Mm -hmm. I do remember the first player I've ever learned and I just wanted to be her was Katrina Dowd she's um older now I'm pretty sure retired but she just had this like sick she would always post videos of her doing like stick tricks and I became obsessed like that was I didn't work on wall ball. I didn't work on catching. I didn't work on throwing. I only worked on stick tricks. And like to the point where my coach was like, that can only get you so far, Danny. I was like, okay. (laughs) I I thought it was so cool. And she was like a huge role model. And I remember with like the recruiting process, she, I would go to UNC camps in like eighth grade because I was obsessed. And she was the assistant coach. And I would like, it was the first time I got starstruck. Like I was like, oh my God, there she is. Like she's so cool. She had like the typical lacrosse swagger, like, dressed really cool played with this fiddled with the stick really cool 
And then she became the coach, the head coach for like a few years, didn't last long, but a few years at Oregon. And during my recruiting process, she, we had a phone call and I was like, I can't, I'm already nervous enough, but it's Katrina Dowd on the other side of the phone and she wants to talk to me. It was just so cool just talking to her. So and, that, I guess she's the one player. That yeah. Was yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And obviously before college, uh, you played at Sacred Heart Academy. So I just sort of want to ask you, what was that experience like for you? Um, what's like your favorite lacrosse memory? Just when you look back on it, what are some of the things you took away from that experience? Yeah, so I feel like I had a different high school lacrosse experience than most probably Division One lacrosse players. My high school was horrible. Like, it was not very – like, athletic in certain sports but lacrosse we didn't we didn't elevate very much we went like 16 and 2 we just it it wasn't lacrosse focused but so it was very frustrating for me at first because I was like I want to be this big lacrosse player like yada yada but no one around I was only like one of one or two of us played lacrosse club wise so like actually took it serious the rest were just like oh sure I'll play lacrosse like might as well so it was tough but looking back I would say like I took a lot from it, but I didn't realize in the moment, like I was very like, I wish I took advantage of just like having fun with it instead of trying to take it so serious, like make it into something it's never going to be. So I guess it was like really, I wish that I just enjoyed it. Whereas like I could go to club practice and take it seriously, but I took all of it serious, but my favorite memories from it, because it was awesome. I went to a really, tiny private schools is like 42 girls in a graduating class so your teams are very close as well it doesn't matter what grade you are in so something like I really loved about it was how there was no pressure any of my friends could play even if they were never even touched a stick before so my favorite memory is one of my really good friends her name's Emma I'm gonna tell her that I brought her up she's gonna laugh um she she doesn't play like many sports really and she was like yeah sure I'll play lacrosse and we like didn't have a goalie at the time we're like, Emma, why don't you be the goalie? And she's like, no. But then we somehow convinced her. And through like the four years, I think she did it freshman year. Like I would always shoot on her and help her. And my dad was the coach my freshman year. And it was just so fun watching her grow from like never touching a stick to actually being like a pretty decent goalie. And I was like, this is so cool. Just no other like school, if you're on varsity, would ever, you would ever get to see that type of growth. It just, everyone's already on the high playing field. So it's very unique and very fun and cool. But from yeah. like club taught me a lot too, but that's like self-explanatory. And like you also played other sports in high school. You played field hockey and basketball. I'm sort of curious um, how those other sports helped you out in lacrosse, if at all. Sorry, I just got a phone call. So the screen went away. But um, would you repeat that question? Sorry. Yeah, no problem. It, I also noticed that you played other sports in high school as well, uh, field hockey and basketball. I'm just curious, um, how did playing those other sports help you out in lacrosse, if at all? They helped me like like crazy. Then Even when being recruited, like a lot of the first questions that coaches asked me were like, what sports do you play? They're like, it's so much more important to play other sports than lacrosse. And I didn't realize at the time, but looking back, like basketball – it taught me so much IQ because they're very similar sports, very different, but very similar strategically. It taught me so much IQ that I didn't realize brought like carried into lacrosse for me. And even just footwork and staying in shape was really helpful. Field hockey taught me a lot, like especially the way lacrosse is growing and changing so rapidly. Like you can kick the ball. Now you can flick it. You can do anything you want. Field hockey. I remember like, when flicking the ball became like a thing in lacrosse, like, and like a strategy, like it came so naturally to me. And everyone's like, how? Cause like a lot of people miss it when they try to flick it. And it's just like all these little things that I realized I've learned from other sports, even lacrosse carried into field hockey. Like I remember one time in field hockey, a ball came flying in the air and I just batted it in. And my dad started laughing. He's like, you wouldn't have done that if you didn't play lacrosse. Yeah. I was like, it's so, it was like the first time I realized like other sports teach you so much about the one sport you want to play so it was very important and it was like a huge emphasis especially for my officer coach she was like that's the number one thing I look in look for for a player is like that they're very diverse across the board with sports because you can't just learn a lot of your skills from just playing lacrosse which is something I've learned over the years absolutely and plus it gets rid of burnout and I feel like it makes you more athletic too 
And I think that's important because I feel like a lot of people now only play one specific sport, which is kind of sad because I feel like growing up, I feel like everyone played at least everyone played like two, a million. two or three sports um, growing up. So um, hopefully that changes soon. I don't know. Maybe maybe um, maybe in a few years it finally swings. The pendulum swings back the other way, I hope. Yeah, definitely. I hope so, too. I'm going to make my kids play a bunch of sports. <laughs> Now, how did your high school lacrosse experience help prepare you for college? Um, obviously, you said your team uh, was struggling a lot. So I'm curious sort of like how that experience helped prepare you for college. I think that my high school experience taught me a lot with like knowing how to have fun, too, and still take the sport very serious. Because I think that can get lost a lot, especially in college, like depending on team dynamic or your coaching staff or yourself and like the pressures of it all you can lose a lot of like the enjoyment of it it becomes more of a job than like why you originally started playing so I think like high school really taught me how to not take lacrosse serious in aspects and that like it's it's not the end of the world but also to like push yourself and like challenge yourself at the same time and like I I can bring in club as well because club taught me a lot when it comes to like actual lacrosse like taking it serious like I think that the number one thing is if you can survive the commitments and the sacrifices you make in middle school and high school playing club lacrosse or playing any club sport, even if it's soccer or anything, like you sacrifice a lot of the social events in high school and middle school and just like getting to go to the pool in the summers or going down the beach a lot, you sacrifice a lot of your weekends. If you can do that, I think you can do division one lacrosse because it's it's a lot harder to sacrifice when you're in that like trying to prove something phase of like middle school and high school than it is in, in college. Cause you're already like, you already really know who you are for the most part. You're more comfortable. You don't really have FOMO as much stuff like that. So like, if you can do that, I think college across should come a little more natural. And that's what helped me is like the structure. And I'm also a kid with like ADHD learning disabilities. Like I needed, I sports were my outlet for a lot of school related I need structure if I didn't I always said if I didn't play lacrosse in college I would have dropped out 100% I would have never done my homework never went to class so it's really it's really helpful for me definitely now you originally uh played for Hofstra so talk about your recruiting process there and why did you choose to go there originally okay yeah so for Hofstra my recruiting process was interesting um it was weird because me and my sister are very close in age but she's slightly older but doesn't play any sports. So she was going through the like college application process while I was like my freshman and sophomore year. She's a junior and senior. So she's like looking for colleges and I'm looking for colleges at the same time. And it was weird. Cause it's like, I can't know where I'm going before my older sister. And like, my dad was like, I, I don't want you to like jump the gun. A lot of people on my team were jumping the gun committing freshman year. He's like, I want you to take your time give your sister some time to pick where she wants to go. So she doesn't like feel all like insecure about it. Like, Oh my God, my little sister knows where she's going. And I don't kind of thing. So I didn't have a really busy like phone call list really at all. And I got very insecure about it. I was like, no one wants me to add. And he's like, no, that's not true. It's just like, you're getting phone calls here and there, but like girls on my team are like, Oh, this team and this team and this team. And I was like, Oh my God, this isn't happening for me. And then so sophomore year, summer, Things started to speed up and I started to get some phone calls, but nothing serious at all. Like no offers, nothing. And then the rule hit. It was our junior year when it was like the blackout period. And that really screwed me over because I was like mid talking to a bunch of schools and then ghosted because we couldn't talk to them anymore until September 1st. And then September 1st came around and nah, none of those schools reached out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to start over. It's you got to deal with it, whatever. So I went to a few like, like camps where like a bunch of schools were there like at like random facilities and Hofstra was one of them. And I remember one of my college coaches, like club, co like if I were to coach now, like I'm a college player, she went to Hofstra and I've never heard of this school. And I was like, okay, like I'll look at Hofstra. And I went to a camp, visited a few times. Coach really liked me. So she started reaching out. And from there, like I, I really liked what she had to offer. It was all across everything surrounded we had our own stadium, our own weight room, our own locker room, everything separate from every other sport. So it just seemed like a lacrosse hub, like and high school kid getting recruited there. Like, that's all you want. Like, who cares about school? Like, 
they have it's everything's about lacrosse here and I was so pumped so I went there and I'm very happy about it although like did transfer but um yeah that's how I basically got recruited there and honestly I don't think I've ever gone if I never had that coach who played there because I would have never heard of it (laughs) what was uh, like the biggest adjustment you had to make uh, to college lacrosse from high school and club I think something that shocked me because I was always a very confident I was always confident in myself when it came to lacrosse, especially from my high school, because I was like, come, I was always above everyone at high school. And then at club, I was just comfortable with my teammates. Never had to like, if I made a mistake, they're, they're picking up the ball for me type stuff. So when I got to college, it's, I didn't know a single girl on the team. No one's ever heard of Hofstra from like our area. And my confidence just dropped. Like my freshman year, I had none. I was all these Long Island girls are so much better than me. Every single girl on the team is top guns. They're the team we never could beat. I'm like, these girls are so much better than me in my head and freaking out. And just, I think that was my biggest adjustment is like learning my own strengths versus like comparing myself when it came to like lacrosse. So I struggled a lot with like confidence my freshman year, but sophomore year, my coach even made a joke. She was like, you're a different girl. Like you're a different girl. I was like, I don't know. I guess it was just like the thought of being a freshman was really scary to me. Yeah. And your first your first year with Hostra obviously got cut short to the pandemic. So I sort of want to ask you how you sort of handle that challenge in adversity and how did you sort of prepare for the following season with a lot of uncertainty and with a lot of restrictions as well? Yeah, so that's very interesting. And try to block out that time. <laughs> but I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um it was definitely rough. It was confusing because I I wasn't playing much my freshman year like and I was okay with that I was like I'm a freshman like I gotta earn my way on and but I was obviously frustrated anyone who's not playing is gonna be frustrated and I remember this word COVID's going around like oh like don't like my coach was like just try to stick to the team like we don't really know what's going on and like New York was the worst and we were in Long Island at the time it's like the first place to like blow up with cases and we had a game against Boston College like roughly like around this time and we're on our way and my coach surprises me and I'm just the first game I'm ever going to start in and I'm face guarding Charlotte North and I didn't know who she was at the time I was like like an idiot freshman who just doesn't know like the updated college across and so everyone's like dude you're face guarding Charlotte North and I'm like who's that and they're all like uh <laughs> do you not know who Charlotte North? she's the best player in the country I'm like guys you can't tell me this before the game like I'm like freaking out. Obviously, we did like scout and stuff, but everyone's just like congratulating me. I was like, what is the big deal about this girl? And everyone's like, you don't know. Like, she's insane. Like, she's so good. And I was like, I don't know who this girl is. So we we played them. She embarrassed me. I played for five minutes and then we we cut the face guard. And then the after the game on our bus ride back is when we found out that our conference is like canceling. And I was like, no, that can't be my first and my last game starting. Like, I can't go off like that. So when our coach told us that, I immediately started bawling. And I was like, why am I crying? Like, the seniors are the ones, like, losing their senior year. Like, because we didn't think that the years were going to be a thing yet. So I, it was confusing because I was like, I can't cry as a freshman. I can't be sad as a freshman because I have years to go. So I was, like, trying not to be sad about it. Like, being very positive. But at the same time, all quarantine, the one game that ESPN Plus wants to replay is that game. And I'm like, no, the one game. But it was definitely tough mentally. And physically, like I said, I'm not the most motivated person when it comes to working out. So like just being stuck at home is tough. You can definitely tell in my my run test the difference between freshman and sophomore year. Freshman year is a lot better. But we figured it out. We worked through it. The restrictions were ridiculous sophomore year. Not ridiculous. They were smart and like, but like to a college kid, very frustrating and really hard to adjust to. And yeah, so it's just like, I figured it out as I went and I had my team alongside with me and friends at home and other people from my club team that we were all talking about it and we'll meet up to do like training, like very careful and stuff like that. But definitely really weird time to be a -hmm. college athlete. (laughs) We'll talk about your experience uh, with Hofstra during your second year with that team, even though you only played in two games, your team lost to James Madison, the CAA semifinals. And then you guys also made it to the national tournament that year. I guess just what that what was that whole season like for you uh, from your perspective? Yeah, so my sophomore season was really rough for me. Um, and it was like 
I think if I didn't have sophomore year, I would would have stayed at or like COVID sophomore year, like vibes. I would have stayed at Hofstra, but just the way the cards played out weren't in my favor. Like specifically, like team stuff. Um, the upperclassmen, both like the juniors and the seniors, live off campus, and then the freshmen and sophomores don't. But sophomore year the junior and senior house needed one more person and it would have to have been a sophomore and I was luckily enough I was picked so I was so pumped I was moving in with the upperclassmen in a house everyone else was going to be on campus and then COVID hits whatever our coach thinks it's the best idea to um have everyone live off campus so we don't get in trouble with the dorms and just like make her life easier as like a division one program we can only live together team team stuff and so I was the only one not in my grade, not living together. And New York was very, very strict with like, they had pods, like you could only train with the people in your house. So my whole grade is just growing and getting closer. And I'm with the upperclassmen as a sophomore. And I wasn't even allowed to go over their house. I wasn't allowed, like, and it was all for safety reasons. And I understood that, but it was very frustrating. And I felt really alone during that time. But I'm very close with the, my housemates, but they weren't my my year. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't my best friends. So it was really hard on me mentally dealing with that. And then um, just seeing them, like, have girls' night at their house and I'm not there. And, like, our girls' nights and, like, little drama, like, would play out and stuff. And I live with the three captains. So, like, there'll be times where, like, I would not do the right thing and, like, go to my friend's house without saying anything. And then I'd come home and they'd be like, where were you? And, like they're the captains they don't want to tell on me I was like yeah I know it's just really hard and then lacrosse wise it got even harder because I was dealing with all that but then I was also not getting the playing time I wanted so I was just like mentally not there and frustrated so then that's when I decided like I think I need to go somewhere else yeah and And so yeah it was crazy yeah, just talk about your transfer to uh, Fairfield and how does the transfer process work and uh, what made that school the place for you? Yeah, funny enough, I had no idea there was even a transfer portal. Like, I didn't know how transferring worked. And I remember I called my club coach before I even told my dad that I wanted to transfer because I was like, I don't know where to even begin. Like, how does this work? And she made it seem like the most nonchalant thing ever. And I thought it was the biggest deal in the world. And she's like, oh, yeah no problem like I have girls transfer all the time you just tell your coach or like she told me to wait for the end of the season just like because we were halfway through the season she's like you're not going to transfer mid-season so it's fine don't tell your coach until the end and she'll know what to do and you'll be fine and we'll start looking and I was like oh my god she literally made it sound that chill and I was like oh okay so I didn't tell anyone and then I I remember right when we lost in the NCAA tournament we had like end of year meetings and I walk in she's like starting to ask me about like things and I was like wait can I stop you there um me and my dad have been talking and I think I'm gonna transfer and she helped me along with it all and I just I knew I wanted Fairfield before I even told the coach because I was so lost my sophomore year if it was Hofstra if it was lacrosse if it was both do I need to quit like I had no idea there was no answers to the the miserableness that I was going through that I was like, I want to go to a school that I have friends at already that aren't athletes, that I want to go to a lacrosse program that I can play at, but it's still going to be a challenge to get on the field. Like it's not, I'm just not walking on the team and getting on the field. Like I want to earn it. And then also if it is lacrosse, that was making me so miserable, I can quit and still be in love with the school. And I didn't have that at Hofstra. Like I, and I didn't think I wanted to quit lacrosse at Hofstra anyway, but I couldn't quit there because I wouldn't want to have gone to the school. I was only there for the people in the sport. So that's why I picked Fairfield to go. And I visited and I loved it. And the beach, you live on the beach your senior year. I needed that. I'm obsessed with that. And it was the best decision of my life. I was it, unbelievable. And the team, everything. Very you also got to play in the MAAC conference. I just want to ask you, what's it like playing in that conference and just the competition you face every game? Yeah, the MAC, um, it's definitely an interesting conference. Um, I think I'm bad at this because I wasn't here all four years, but I think we have like a four or five Pete. I forget. But we basically win it like a lot. And but it it doesn't go to say like the MAC's 
just like oh Fairfield's the best team in the MAC. Like we definitely have our challenges in it every year. Like we find ourselves in a little bundle and we pull ourselves out of it, which is awesome. But yeah, it's really cool. And I I I knew when I was at Hofstra, I was like, we could win the CAA. And we 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 I remember the JMU game you mentioned. We thought we had that. Like and we went in so confident. Like I remember I was as shocked when we lost the JMU game as when we found out our season was canceled my freshman year. Like I was like, we weren't supposed to do that. Like the season's not supposed to end yet. So it was very weird. But so I wanted to go to also a school where we're going to win a ring. Like I wanted to win, win a ring. I wanted to be able to say that as always like a, a goal of mine and Fairfield lo and behold wins rings. They win a lot. And so that was awesome. Just like getting to play in the Mac winning, the MAC championship going to the tournament and it was a different feeling than going to the tournament when we were at, when I was at Hofstra because we didn't win that year. We got lucky because the Ivies weren't in, weren't playing that year. So like there was extra, they were taking more at large bids. So like winning the MAC and getting to the tournament felt so much more like accomplished, like it was a bigger accomplishment. And it was just so awesome. And so fun. It's probably one of my highlights. If you were to ask me that question, it's like winning the MAC and going to the tournament that year. Yes, that was my next question. During your first year with Fairfield, you won the MAC championship. I guess talk about that first one and what it meant to you. Yeah, um, it meant a lot to me. It's probably that year, like junior year, was like that is huge to me. Like I've been through the ringer, like I've said with like Hofstra, and then also my junior year, beginning of season, I was really frustrated because I'm a midi. But coming into a new team, defense is way more important than offense. And I didn't click. Like, I was an upperclassman coming in with the defense that was already working together. So my coach was like, I want you playing defense this year. And as a midi who loves midi, I was not thrilled. And I definitely picked her brains. We went at it a few times. Very funny, like, always, like, laughing about it. But I'm like, come on, move me back to midi. But um, so I was – it was very mentally frustrating the beginning of the year, my junior year, just, like, trying to play catch up with the team because everyone already is like had the chemistry and I didn't. And I also like played a whole different, I learned a whole different style of lacrosse my freshman and sophomore year than they do at Fairfield. So I had to relearn basically. It felt like a freshman again in a way. And so getting to, I started playing a little bit throughout the season, but nowhere near what I wanted to junior year. And then the Mac tournament came along and I started face guarding again. And it was like, it felt it was the first time I felt like I was doing something for the team. And when we ended up winning the Mac tournament, it was it was really like I felt reassured that like, OK, I was I'm here like I deserve to be here. I deserve the ring because I'm very like I'm a mental head case. A lot of things like I if I didn't play this like last season, I wouldn't be like, I don't want the ring. Like I didn't earn it kind of thing. And I get yelled at for saying that a lot because it's like, no, you do you do a lot more than you think, even if you're not playing but I couldn't help but have those like intrusive thoughts. And so I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say those thoughts. I was like, I do deserve this ring. I was a part of the team. I played on the, like in the tournament, like it was awesome. And it was one of the better games I've ever had in my life. So I was really, really proud of myself. And I didn't think at that point, after two and a half years of like not getting the results I wanted, I finally did. And I remember like, I just gave my dad a hug and I just smiled and I was like, remember this, like, you've been waiting for this. It was like those TikTok trends. It's like the little girl version of you would be so proud. Like I remember thinking that I was like, she would be so proud. And so it was just like one of the best days of my life. And it was awesome. And you got to play in your first uh, tournament game against Syracuse, even though you guys lost, what'd you take away from that game, especially since uh, Syracuse is one of the top teams in the country that season. And you guys almost beat them. I think it was like a one or two goal game. Yeah. Um, that game like literally makes me blush. Like I, our assistant coach, she was new this year. She didn't even know what Fairfield was until that game. And now she's our assistant coach. Like it really put us as a team on the map. I think outside of the Mac, any team tries to look past us like, Oh, it's like Fairfield. They're in the Mac, like whatever. And we really showed like the lacrosse community, like that we're here to play. And I think we showed ourselves, I think but going into that game, like locker room talk, I don't think we genuinely thought we were going to keep up with them. Like making jokes, like, oh, like we're going to beat 
the oranges like but like everyone's laughing no one's taking it serious like knowing that that's probably our last game and then I remember at halftime when we were like tied we're like down by one or maybe up by one I don't remember we were in the locker room and our captain or something like that was like guys we can do this and everyone was like it wasn't joking anymore it was like yeah we're going to do it and it was like it was cool to see us like joking versus serious and like how serious like we believed in ourselves and I don't think we did believe in ourselves and even losing the game by one the team like confidence was unbelievable like it was like we are a good team like it really it put into perspective to us like we need to believe in ourselves way more because we are way more like capable of doing what we just did if we just knew that from the start kind of thing and it definitely helped us like going into this year we came in very like confident and not cocky like we're here to prove ourselves and like that was our whole message was like like let's elevate ourselves and stuff like that so it was really cool to see and yeah it just brought a lot of confidence as a team and and honestly individually too you could tell a lot of people came out a lot more confident than they were before the game and being a senior this past year I guess how did you sort of what type of leadership did you want to bring to the team? Were you more of a vocal leader or lead by example type of player? I would say definitely vocal, but also I like to lead by example, but I'm more of the vocal. I like to be very positive and uplifting. I think it's very important because it can be those long hours every single day practicing for like three to four hours lifts a lot of times you're, you're, you're getting a little burnout, but no one wants to admit it. So it's really important to have, like, I've had, I can point out those play- teammates to me, like that have brought me out of my lulls at practice. So I try to be that teammate for everyone at my, at practice, just, you got the next one, like always positive. And then leading by example, I've always wanted to be the hardest worker on the team. And I always want people to like, if you were to interview one of my teammates and you, you ask that question, I want them to be able to say me. And so I just try to do that every single day. And the teammates that I knew did that. I always surround, like I was next to them during the conditioning. I was next to them. I try to be with them during lift drills. I would go against them because I know I'm scared of them. Like, like they challenge me and I don't want to be comfortable. That's, that's not why I work so hard to get here, that type of stuff. So I think it's very important just to have people like that. And, and it can be uncomfortable. You, you kind of can look like an idiot sometimes, but it's definitely worth it. And I think it's important to have on the team. Now your team won another MAC championship uh, this past season. Uh, what did this championship mean to you, especially as a senior? And just talk about your team's performance during that game as well. Yeah, I think the team performance is pretty obvious. We we were lights out, perfect play, basically. Like, yeah, a few mistakes here and there, but we really came to win this year. And I think it was really – it meant a lot for – I was excited because we didn't want to be the senior class that lost the streak kind of vibe. And we we didn't and we kept it going and a lot of it for the fifth years as well. Like they came back to win another one. We can't let them down as a senior class. And as a team, like we're we don't really like what was I going with that? Um, like as a team, we're like really, really close. Like I don't look at like I'm, one of my closest friends was a freshman, like and one of my closest friends was a sophomore. Like we didn't like group anyone so it was really important because we played for each other and not for ourselves and like winning it together it was just awesome and just getting to see like the fifth years with the brass knuckle rings and stuff like that is just so cool so it was awesome now unfortunately your season came to an end uh, losing to Loyola in the tournament Uh, how have you sort of reflected on that loss and what will you overall take away from your lacrosse career with uh, Fairfield yeah, so I think it's very funny about the Loyola thing because the last team I played at Hofstra was Loyola in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And the last team we played at Fairfield was Loyola in the NCAA tournament. So it's full circle for me. Um, and one of my best friends plays on Loyola, so it was really fun to like get to see her play and get to play against her. And no bad blood, like we were joking about it after both games and seeing her family. And honestly, it was awesome, like, it was a hard fight. Outcome obviously didn't come the way we wanted to, but Loyola is such a good team. And yeah, it, it was just cool to be there and get to say I got to go to another NCAA tournament. It's really cool. So we're now in a segment I like to call six questions that have nothing to do with lacrosse. 
And the goal of this segment is to sort of get to know you and your team a little bit more off the field. Uh, so my first question is, if there was a movie made about your life, uh, who would you want to play yourself? Yeah, this one I struggled with. So I actually texted all my friends about it. I was like, guys, who would you say? Because I can't pick. And I got a lot of Jennifer Lawrence's and a lot of uh, Shailen Woodley, the girl from like uh, Divergent, I think, or something. But if I could pick like out of every celebrity I would ever want, like not being cocky or like whatever, like whatever, I would want like a Blake Lively, like who wouldn't? Who yeah. wouldn't want that? So that's who I would say, but not for any reason, just because I'm obsessed with her. But a bunch of my friends would say like Shailen Woodley or Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool if Ryan Reynolds got to play me in the movie because then I'll just brag uh, to my friends about that because that's a good flex to have. That is a great flex to have. <laughs> now, what is your go-to karaoke song? My go-to karaoke song is Little Lion Man by um, Mumford & Sons. What is the most underrated holiday and what is the most overrated holiday? overrated holidays i would say would be fourth of july and new year's just because i feel like everyone hypes them up so much and they're never they never hit what you think they're gonna be and underrated christmas eve because it's my birthday (laughs) yeah that is a good holiday i agree with you on that i do like fourth of july though i think it's probably the most underrated one in my opinion oh really yeah i would say the most overrated for me is probably halloween just because yeah. If you're not a kid, you really it's really not as fun as it used to be. So and like yeah. if you're not into dressing up, there's really nothing for you to do. So I've never really been the biggest fan of Halloween. Yeah. Halloween can be stressful and figuring out the costumes. Well, maybe I'll change my answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh what is the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Oh wait, let me look it up because I forget the name of it, but it's actually insane. Um, I looked it up earlier. The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. It rhymes, but my friend showed me it's a it's a docu series on Netflix, and it's about this woman or girl no one really knows, and she has dwarfism and she got adopted as like a baby, but apparently she's like a con artist and she was actually like forty. Oh wow! And, yeah, and like ruined this fan like this wealthy family's life, but then like both sides are wrong in the party so no one actually knows the truth because like she lied to get adopted but they lied to like get her not adopted anymore like to get her out of it so like both parties are like wrong but it and it like uncovers it and i need to finish the series but it's like really interesting but yeah it's like creepy like now i'm like scared of that (laughs) yeah no i i that's definitely i don't know how you can sort of manage to do that uh i've never heard about that before so like and you look at her in the docu and she like looks like a kid yeah some she looks like a grown adult it's Mm -hmm. crazy i would say for me probably basic one but just the whole submarine yeah uh, madness that's been going on i just obviously i feel sad for what happened but at the same breath like i don't know why you would risk your life to go see the titanic underwater but i guess people have different um views on uh i guess people like to take more risks than i would yeah definitely it it is definitely crazy and but i've been following that too it's definitely interesting i don't know if i could do that though no 